Welcome to worship at Troxville United Methodist Church. and welcome to our worship service here at Trucksville United Methodist Church. I wanted to say a few words about our online experience this weekend. Uh, it'll be a more abridged version of what we usually do because we will be sharing in person uh, at our church pavilion on July 18th and 19th. Uh, we wanted to uh, continue to do an online worship service. Uh, we will be experimenting with uh, Facebook Live and uh, to see if that will be a possibility of recording the service moving forward. Uh, but for this week, we wanted to make sure that there was an online experience for you. So uh, we do pray uh, for you on this day. Pray that this worship service may speak to you and invite you to pray for our first in-person gathering this weekend. Uh, pray that uh, God's uh, Spirit will be present in all things. Thank you very much. Welcome to our worship service. As we gather for worship, I want to share a story. In the 1890s, a man named Samuel Brangle was a commissioner in the Salvation Army. He was working in Boston. As he made his rounds of the neighborhood one night and passed by a bar, some men targeted him. They threw a brick at his head. Their aim was good, and Brangle nearly died. It took him 18 months to recover. During that time, he wrote a little book called Helps to Holiness. Thousands of copies were published and sold. And after he was back on his feet and able to work and preach again, people would often thank him for that book. He would respond simply by saying, if there had been no brick, there would have been no book. In fact, his wife saved the brick and she had Genesis chapter 50 verse 20 engraved on it. Don't you see? You planned evil against me, but God used those same plans for my good, as you will see all around you right now. Now, I don't believe that God caused Samuel Brangle to be disabled by that brick any more than I believe that God has caused this COVID crisis. Let's be clear. God did not cause this to get our attention. But God will take the events that happen, even or especially maybe the bad ones, and will use them in amazing ways. 
It's just what Paul wrote in Romans chapter 8. All things work for good for those who believe. It doesn't mean that all things are good. It means that God can use all things for good. My friends, it has been a long four months since we worshiped together in person. These months have been full of challenges and opportunities, successes and failures, celebration and grief, joy and fear. Even now, as we get ready to gather in outdoor worship in person, we're unsure of just what we should do and, and how we should do it. For some of us, these months have been full of change as schedules and usual patterns were upended or disrupted. For others, their day-to-day -day routines haven't changed all that much. Many of us have had time to reflect, to consider, to think about new ways to do old things, to think about new things that we've never done before, to consider what things we need to take on, and maybe what things we need to set aside. For me, these months have been full of the stuff of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. For everything that happens in life, there is a season, a right time for everything under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to collect the harvest, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to tear down, a time to build up, a time to cry, a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to pile them up, a time for warm embrace <laughs> and a time for keeping your distance. A time to search, a time to give up as lost, a time to keep and a time to throw out, a time to tear apart and a time to bind together, a time to be quiet and a time to speak up, a time to love and a time to hate, a time to go to war and a time to make peace. Earlier this week, we, we asked you to share some insights you've gained over the past four months, specifically answers to these questions. What have you learned about yourself during this time away? What have you learned about your church? What surprised you most during this time? What did you miss the most? If you didn't send in answers, that's okay. But I'd encourage you still to take some time to answer these questions for yourself. You might be amazed at what you've learned. We're going to share some of the answers we did get during worship this weekend. Jay and I are going to share some of ours as well. For me, I have missed gathering in worship with our church family, and I'm thankful for tools like Zoom and Facebook and YouTube that allow us to connect in new but meaningful ways. I'm thankful to serve a church that has continued to serve others, continued to be the church even in the midst of this crisis, with meals and bedrolls and 2,500 masks made and donated. I'm thankful for the grace and patience that has been shown to me throughout these times by so many people in so many ways. And while I'm grateful to be gathering together this weekend and thankful for so much, there's a lot that I've learned, too. I've realized that while there are some things I miss from the pre-COVID times, there was a lot that had gotten out of control, out of hand. My schedule was too full. We were spending time and resources on stuff that it turns out we're able to do without. I needed to focus more time on family and relationships, more time on my health. I've worked to develop a sense of non-attachment to things that once held a much higher priority and place in my life. And while at times I long to get back to normal, there are parts I don't want to get back. Parts that were broken, things I don't want to get back to. My prayer for each of us is that as we navigate these stormy waters and strange times, as we venture into a new normal, we will do so intentionally and on purpose. That we will remember the lessons we have learned in these times. And that most of all, we will do all of this with our eyes, our hearts, and our minds focused on Christ and his call to us. Let's pray. Almighty God, as we continue to walk forward into what's next, unsure, uncertain of so many things, there is one thing we are certain of, your presence with us, your power in us, your provision and your protection over us. Lord, let that make us bold and courageous so that as we navigate these days, we can do so with faith and hope and love and trust 
with peace and wisdom. Always looking to you, always listening for you, always seeking after you. Lord, if we can do that, our prayer will be answered because everything we do will bring honor and glory to you. Amen. Welcome to our children and all who may be listening at this time in our worship service. I want to highlight a couple of verses that we will hear in a short time in our scripture passage. It's from Romans chapter 8 verses 24 and 25. Paul writes, For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Patience, that's the word that I want to focus on here this morning. I don't know if you ever heard the uh, prayer that the impatient person uh, one day prayed, Lord, give me patience, but give it to me now. Amen. Would you describe yourself as a patient person or an impatient person? I must confess there are some things about which I am really impatient. Robocalls, those are those unwanted calls that you get on your cell phone. Aggressive drivers. And then trying to place a call to any customer service representative. You're on hold constantly and pressing buttons, trying to get a human voice. I'm reminded of a song by Guns N' Roses entitled Patience. Listen to some of the words of that song. Little patience, need a little patience. Just a little patience, some more patience, need more patience, could use some patience, gotta have some patience, all it takes is patience, just a little patience is all you need. Well, as I said, today's passage ends with the word patience. But there's some other versions that end with a different word. It's close in meaning to patience. It's the word persevere. Persevere. Patience is waiting. Perseverance is waiting through hard times, through severe times. I want to give you some examples of uh, patience and perseverance. Uh, We actually had a discussion about this at our lectionary study group made up of some of the other pastors uh, in our area. Uh, And they actually gave the first example of the difference between patience and perseverance. Patience is waiting to open up gifts under the tree on Christmas morning. Whereas perseverance might be Santa Claus wrapping the gifts, or, worse yet, Santa Claus putting together any gift that comes with the words, some assembly required. Patience is waiting for your favorite dessert. What's your favorite dessert? Mine's probably apple pie with a little scoop of vanilla ice cream. So, again, patience is waiting for your favorite dessert. Perseverance is having to finish all of the broccoli on your plate first. Patience, some of you will be able to relate to this soon, patience is waiting to turn 16 years old and being excited about the opportunity to drive. My niece just went through some of this. Perseverance, though, is having to submit all of the necessary paperwork, completing a physical, doing an eye exam, and passing a driver's test even before receiving your permit. Patience 
is waiting to finally play your first softball game or baseball game since the virus came. Perseverance is having to sit through not one, not two, but three different rain delays until the game is postponed until tomorrow. And finally, patience is waiting for your participation in the school's Christmas pageant the next day, which happens to be the last day before Christmas break. But perseverance is having a snow day, which cancels school and postpones the Christmas pageant until your school return in January. Again, patience is waiting. Perseverance is waiting through hard times. And I think both of those fit in this passage of Scripture. For Paul himself knew that sometimes God calls us to be patient as we wait for the hope that God provides. But other times we're asked to persevere, to go through some difficult, some trying times in order to experience that hope. Certainly these last four months have been uh, an example of not only patience, but perseverance as well. Let's take a moment, if we could, to pray, please. Lord God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks, Lord, for the hope that is ours. We pray, Lord, that we may have patience And, Lord, that we may have perseverance when needed to experience the hope that is ours through you. For these things we ask in your name. Amen. Have a blessed day. As I've done so many times over these months, and will continue to do in the months ahead, I invite you to join me in a time of prayer, wherever you are, however you are, in whatever way is comfortable for you, standing, sitting, kneeling, eyes open, eyes closed. They are all appropriate ways to pray. So will you join me in an attitude of prayer today? Almighty God, we come to you in the midst of an ever-changing world, an ever-changing situation. Lord, there is so much that we don't understand. We're not sure what to do or where to go. Sometimes we're not even sure where to be or how to be. Lord, in those moments, in these moments, remind us to look for you, to listen for you, to seek after you. Help us to hear your voice, that voice that can calm the storms and the waves, that presence that brings peace. Lord, remind us of all the times that you have provided for us and protected us. Because, Lord, if we're honest, in the midst of these struggles and these worries in this new world in which we find ourselves, it's so easy for us to forget. So, Lord, my prayer is that in in some way today, you will remind each and every person who sees this and hears this and joins in this prayer, you'll remind each of us, Lord, you'll remind this whole world, just who you are, of the power that you have to change lives and circumstances, to change hearts and minds, to bring hope and healing, to bring wisdom and courage, so that we can walk boldly into what's next for us as individuals, for our families, for our community, for this church, for this denomination, for this world. Lord, there is so much turmoil and turbulence in our lives right now. Help us to ground ourselves in you, to stand upon that solid rock. Help us to look to you, to look to your cross, the only place where we will truly find the hope and the answers that we seek. Remind us of the promise of your word, that you will never fail us or forget us or forsake us, that you'll always be with us, that you have even carved our names into the palms of your hands. So, Lord, when we forget, remind us and help us to remember. And then having been reminded, help us to go teach others, to remind others 
of your love for them. Lord, if we can do that one person, one life, one home, one workplace, one church, one school, one community at a time, we will change this world. You will change this world. So, Lord, that's our prayer today, that you'll continue to find ways to use even us to bring about change. So, Lord, keep working on us and in us and through us and in spite of us where you have to, that we might become the disciples you've called us to be, that you've made us to be, that this world desperately needs us to be, that we would be disciples bold enough to pray along with your very first disciples the prayer that you taught them. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Today's reading is taken from the 8th chapter of Romans, verses 18 through 25, and is taken from the New Revised Standard Version. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay, and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. This is the word of God for the people of God. Will you pause with me for a moment of prayer? Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. As I had shared earlier with our children, uh, there was some question about what that very last word was in our passage of Scripture today. The version that was read today from the New Revised Standard Version uh, uses the word patience, but there's also uh, some versions which translate it as perseverance. And as I said earlier with the children, again, both could, uh, could apply. Because as Christians, we do that, both wait and wait through hard times all for the hope the promises that God makes to us many times God asks us to wait and sometimes God asks us to persevere and so we're called we're challenged by God to hold tight, to continue to believe, to trust that God will provide what we need the most. It's important for us to heed that advice. As we reflect upon these last four months, truly it has been for us a time of waiting and for many of us, a time of perseverance. And yet I also hope and pray that you have used this time wisely and that you have had a chance to reflect on this time, to grow from this time, and especially to grow in your relationship with God. I sent out questions this past week to some of our congregational members. Uh, Ian alluded to that uh, earlier, and we're going to be sharing many of those this weekend in our worship uh, setting uh, at our uh, pavilion on the uh, 18th and 19th. But I wanted to reflect on some of those uh, responses to the questions from my perspective then, too. One of the first questions that was asked is this, what is one thing you learned about yourself. I think about our lives as a three-legged stool. One leg is our spiritual lives. One leg is our physical lives. And one leg is our emotional lives. And it's so important for us to take time so that we don't neglect any one of these three legs. What good is a three-legged stool with only two legs that are useful? 
all three legs are so vitally important. One of the things that I've learned in these past several months has been the need for me to not neglect physical, emotional, and spiritual life. I appreciated the candor of one of our uh, responders to the questions this past week who talked about some struggles with uh, mental health issues in large part because of this time away and the interruption to schedule and just lots of questions and doubts about the times ahead. And in all honesty, I too have struggled with some of these same things, mostly because of my neglection of any one of the three legs. It's so important to keep ourselves grounded. It's so important to take care of our physical health. It's so important for us to take care of our emotional health too. And so I would challenge us too, just as an aside, to think about other people for whom this time period is a challenge. Reach out, connect with them, let them know that you care, and it may make all of the difference in the world. The second question that was asked is, what was uh, one thing that you learned about your church? And I want to say that uh, I am so proud of this congregation uh, for your engagement, for your support, for your willingness to serve all in any kind of circumstances. And all of that has been made so very clear over these past four months. And for those of you who are from other congregations, those who are clergy colleagues, those who are laypersons from other congregations, I'm so proud of all of your efforts as well. I've seen so many uh, things through Facebook and through uh, YouTube of some of the successes that you all are sharing in as a congregation which continues to be the church despite the fact that we are not meeting as the church. Again, I'm so very proud of the Trucksville United Methodist Church and glad to be called one of its pastors here. The third question that was asked is, what is the one thing that surprised you the most while being unable to worship together? And uh, I will tell you that I loved and continue to love our online worship experience. I must admit to you that I looked forward to it every week. And what you all need to know and maybe don't realize is that when Pastor Ian and I watch it on the weekend, it's always the very first time that we have seen the service put all together. It was always a pleasant surprise to me to see and experience the contributions of others. Pastor Ian, our lay readers, Dr. Steve and our wonderful musicians, all of our special music, and mostly how Courtney, Courtney Wagner, would blend it all together. We are indebted to Courtney especially for all of her good work uh, during this time away and all of the work that she continues to do. But certainly the quality of our online worship services has been the biggest surprise to me. The next question was, what did you miss the most? And I have to say I missed the people. I'm a strong extrovert. And the isolation over the past four months has really gotten to me. And I'm sure you know other people who are extroverts who have just been chomping at the bit to uh, talk with somebody, to see somebody, to spend some time with somebody else. Uh, I missed the people. I missed you. Think about it. Uh, Most of us haven't seen each other in four months, almost 16 weeks or so. I missed our community. I missed just being together. 
And the last question that was asked is, what are you most thankful for this weekend? I am most thankful for the efforts of so many people who have continued to be the church, continued to help the church, continued to support the church, continued to pray for the church. And I thank you for all of these efforts which have contributed to our ministry here at Trucksville United Methodist Church. Again, we have been called not only to wait, but also to persevere. But it's not for something that is hopeless, but for something that is hopeful. God knows exactly what we most need. Let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks on this day for this opportunity to worship you. And we praise you, Lord, for the many ways in which you work and move in our lives. We thank you, Lord, too, for being with us in this time of waiting, in this time of waiting through severe times, for teaching us, Lord, lessons of life, for helping us to grow, not only as individuals, but to grow in our relationship with you. And Lord, we also thank you for the opportunity to grow in relationship with each other. Help us, Lord, to be the church no matter where we are. Help us, Lord, to embrace our role as your disciples today. For these things we do ask in your name. Amen. May God bless you and keep you on this day. And now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you this day forth and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen. 
go in peace to serve our Lord. Amen.